Hey guys, so today we're gonna talk about uh, what to expect in a technical phone interview. It could be either coding interview or non-coding, where the interview just asks you a bunch of questions. Uh, but there are a lot of nuances uh, in, a, uh, in a phone interview because when you take an on-site interview, they can see your face, they can hear you. There are a lot of uh, things that are different than phone interview because phone interview, let's say for example, if there is a silence, they don't know whether you're Googling the question or uh, getting help from somebody else, right? So uh, it's important to understand how to take a phone interview and what to expect. So today we're gonna talk about what to expect in all kinds of situations in a phone interview, uh, what kind of tools uh, uh, there might be, uh, what to wear, and how to overall prepare for it. And remember, doesn't matter what kind of interview it is, it's always good to prepare for an interview. And welcome to Interview Nest. All right, so the first question is, why there are phone interviews? If you can understand why there's a phone interview, you can prepare for accordingly, right? Uh, so basically companies, uh, before they bring people in for on-site interview where there be, uh, there's a panel of interviewers, um, they don't wanna waste a lot of time because when the resume comes in, there might be like, you know, they can see your education, they can see your skills, but they don't exactly know, you know, what actually have you, you have done, right? So phone interview is almost like a gateway to um, an on-site interview. So it's quick, within an hour, they will gauge where you are before they invite you in. So it's a first filter, right? Now it can be a coding interview where you have to actually live code and they can see what you are coding. Or it can be just simple oral interview where they might ask you a bunch of technical questions you know, like what is inheritance, what are classes, you know, these are some of the examples. And they can judge based on your answer uh, where you would fit in. All right, so let's first look at non-coding interview. Uh, non-coding interview are just to discuss what you know, okay? Your history, uh, your work history. So they verify the resume uh, and then they ask you a bunch of questions. So if there's like a, uh, some question where you haven't put your, um, let's say, education or that you haven't put uh, the dates or their dates are overlapping in your resume, they can clarify, okay? So they may ask you lots of questions regarding that uh, from your resume and what you have done at this particular job, um, how was the product, what was the team size, they collect all kind of inf information. Uh, then they will ask you some technical questions, some technical oral question like, uh, uh, what is an inheritance, okay? And they're looking for your communication skills, how well you explain. Uh, I, would, I, would, uh, I would suggest not to give textbook answers. Uh, avoid a textbook answer, just to explain in your own term, give a, a nice example, and you know, always ask, is that what you first confirm, is that what you asked? Uh, so make sure that you are on the same page, okay? Now let's uh, let's say if there is a coding interview, okay, you would know this in advance because they will tell you, okay. Uh, so you would have to be sitting in front of a com computer. Right? So that's the first thing, uh, which means that you have to um, be at a place where you can comfortably take this interview. Uh, it could be either either um, you know from your home or from a place where you know there's not much noise. For example, let's say if you are, if you take an interview in the afternoon, um, right after lunch. Usually, if you take an interview, you're probably at work, right? And uh, you need to find a, a quiet place close to your work. You can go and set it up, and make sure that there's no noise coming from behind. Let's say if you pick a restaurant, um, you can say, "Hey, uh, can I have a corner where I can do this?" Uh, coffee shops are fine, but again, that can be a lot of noise. Also, you need to have a good internet connection um, because let's say if they're providing free Wi-Fi and it's overloaded and it's slow, then it doesn't really work because uh, that might put a lot of negative points on you because uh, they might think that you know you did not you do not choose this place wise, first of all. I would say most of the time you should, you should be ta taking interviews from the home, okay? And if you're taking interviews from a home, 
you probably have to take a day off. Now, I would not recommend doing that uh, to take a day off. Rather, I would say, ask uh, the interviewer that, can you take an interview early in the morning? So before you go to work or uh, later in the evening, that you come early and take the interview. This way you do this in the comfort of your home um, where there is no problem. As for the format, uh, there can be two different kind of formats, okay? Uh, one would be a simple, they will call you and you will um, basically, they will give you a, a link to some code sharing software, which you open and whatever you type, they can see whatever they type, you can see, right? Uh, you don't see their face, they don't see your face. You basically talk via phone and code on your computer. The good thing about this is if you don't have a fast connection, it's fine because uh, you're only sharing the code, right? Um, the second kind of interview would be they would you would have to share your, your screen with them. Uh, also, there might be a video, right? So you can see their face, they can see your face. You need a faster connection, first of all. Uh, why would you, why would they want a format like that? Well, there, there could be two reasons. Uh, a lot of people um, want to make sure that the person who is taking the interview is the real person who is taking the interview because, uh, of, you know, there are times when people cheat and uh, some other person is taking an interview and some other person is actually uh, getting the job, right? Um, because that could happen. So they want to know it is you who is talking. Also, if you are Googling, if you have a computer on the side, they can see it. They can see everything uh, that's going on on your screen because they're sharing. And make sure if that is the kind of interview you're taking, make sure that you know this in advance that you're going to be sharing uh, your screen and there'll be a video so you can, you, you should be able to actually uh, get ready, right? Because um, if you're going to share your f video, then you you need to look nice, at least presentable, right? Uh, I know some people just, you know, get up early in the morning and then take interview, their hair is messy and everything. That kind of a, leaves a little bit of a negative impression. So if you know in advance, you can prepare, uh, make sure the background is uh, clean. Uh, okay, uh, if there's too much mess in your in your room, uh, then it doesn't look positive. It adds uh, a negative uh, image of you, right? So make sure that you clean it up, have a maybe plain white background or maybe a few furniture, but no mess. Okay, as for the coding, code sharing software, what kind of software do you expect? Um, there are lots of different uh, tools in market. Uh, basically, they will decide what tool they're going to be using. Uh, it could be a paid one or a free one. Uh, but make sure that you get that information in advance because every tool has some nuances, right? So you need to under understand what the tool is and how it really works. Uh, because let's say if you never use this tool and suddenly they ask, ask you to use it and if you might be wasting some time, you know, just... Uh, trying to learn a few things. Let's say if you, if you need to run the code and uh, they'll say, oh, click on this here. And then you say, well, where? I don't, I don't see. And then it's a, so it's a, it's a lot of waste of time, right? Instead, let them know in advance, hey, what, what kind of tool are you gonna be using? So you go download the tool or look at it, play around with it, understand it. So in an interview, you are comfortable with that tool. Uh, essentially, there are multiple kinds of tools available. Uh, there is a one called Collab Edit. Collab Edit is almost like a where you can just type your code, but you cannot execute it. Okay, so almost like whiteboarding. Okay, um, so something happens you don't know, you cannot debug it because there is no way to debug it. Uh, nowadays, they'll give you something like a code repair uh, where uh, code pad or code pair where um, you can actually put a console log and then see what's happening actually. Um, you can actually output it, you can debug your code right in, inside the tool. Uh, what about the coding question? What kind of question uh, can you expect in a coding interview? Now, there are multiple kind of uh, question can be, uh, some people wanna 
test your ability in a specific framework or, or a language. So they'll, they'll build uh, four or five small examples of tests. They'll give it to you. And you know, it might take five, 10 minutes to solve each of them. And uh, that's how they judge you, uh, your ability, right? So they will test your coding styles and your knowledge of that particular language. Um, they can ask you a problem solving question, right? Uh, an algorithm question or data in, in, in data structure, like, you know, it could be a tree or linked list or whatever, right? And this is the new trend. Pretty much every company nowadays uh, are asking, doesn't matter what kind of job, it is a front end, back end, um, firmware, whatever, they, they might ask uh, algorithm and data structure questions and always uh, cover the corner cases, uh, exceptions, and make sure the the complexity, you discuss the complexity with the interview. And there could be some other kind of questions that I haven't covered. Uh, but typically uh, in, a, in a phone interview, uh, you make sure that if there is, if you are thinking, tell them that you're thinking so you are and constantly communicating. Uh, not over communicating like every second, but at least constantly communicating so that they know what you're doing. So there is no doubt in their mind that they're doing something else, right? Um, this can be tricky. Tell me your experience and uh, what you think about technical for phone interviews. And if you're recently interview interviewing, then if you have recently interviewed or um, interviewing currently, then um, let me know your experience and what kind of thing that you uh, experience and what advice you might have for, for the audience. Please share uh, via comment. And I hope you learned something from this uh, tutorial. And if you do, please like, don't forget to like, like, subscribe, like, subscribe and provide a nice comment. And if you are interviewing, good luck and make sure that you prepare before you go.